after, after there's a message on Sunday and me and Debbie get in the car after the service and we're going to lunch or we're going to do something, um, I have, I have, a, I have a, a tradition. I get in the car and I start to panic. I, I start to go, what am I going to talk about next week? <laughs> I have no clue. And usually by Tuesday, Wednesday, I, I, something happens or God downloads something and I start, oh, oh, this is something God wants you know, us to hear. But it has been a heavy, a heavy action week. It's been a week where I was just like, we were the family, we were just moving and we just had to do things and we were busy. So like Tuesday comes around and I, I don't have a message. I, God wasn't really talking to me. And I think Rod and I went out to have some tea or something and we were talking and I was thinking, well, maybe sometimes it works like when I'm talking to the guys or something, God says, you know, focus on this bit. But, you know, we had a great friendship time, but I didn't get anything. So, but... <laughs> But I enjoyed our time together. <laughs> so like Wednesday comes around and Thursday comes around and I'm starting to panic a little bit. I'm going, God, I really don't know what you want me to say on, on Thursday, on, on Sunday. So I went to a men's group on Thursday night and we were talking. And the men that were there, we were just talking about our actions and how we talk as men that there's things we have to do and sometimes we can get distracted. And, you know, we have this relationship with Jesus, and, and we, we, we just want to have that relationship. But there, there's things that we have to do. There's things that God calls us to do that we just sometimes don't do. And, and the men that were there, you know, he's, one of them saying, you know, we have to just not talk so much. We have to just not think about it. Sometimes we just have to be about it. Sometimes we just have to do it. Amen, brother? Yeah. Amen. I'm pointing to somebody, but I'm not looking. So... The thing about it is, I started to think, Lord, I mean, if, if there's something you, you want us to do, if there's something we're not doing, would you, you know, kind of guide me? Just tell me what you want. And so I started thinking about the book of James. So I'm going to give you a Bible scripture. A really important Bible scripture for you. It's really, and I really want to explain context. Because sometimes we could read something in the Bible, we don't get it, we don't understand it, we may or not agree with it, and we're trying to think, okay, what are you trying to say? So you have to like do some deep study. And you have to like look into what the context is and refer back to a few things to really get what the message is. So James 1, 22. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. And you try to think, well, what does this mean? So I started thinking about the action. So I want to explain the context of that a little bit later. But I was talking about with, last night I was with some friends and we were talking about movies. Anybody like movies, right? Watch movies. My favorite kind of movies are action, like adventure movies. Right? Anybody? Cool. Like, you know, remember the Die Hard movies? Or, you know, those awesome movies. Uh, but the action adventure movies. So I started thinking about why am I thinking about this right now? But this has been a week of my family having to take action and to do things. So I started thinking about this moment that happened to me a few, quite a few years ago, like 10 years ago. And I was thinking about these action-oriented times in my life, and one of them stood out. And I want to tell you a quick story. My, my job, my work, they took us out on this field trip and we, they took us to these rapids and it wasn't like, you know, Disneyland rapids. I mean, these were some pretty rapids. It was a team building thing. And, you know, nothing says team building like putting your life in danger. So, <laughs> so we go like to Sacramento and we, we go down kind of the tough part of the river and what we do is we, we get this instruction from somebody and he's telling us, okay, now, don't mess around. Here's what you got to do. You know, it's going to be fun. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be bumpy. There's going to be moments of laughter and moments of tears. And, you know, and he goes, but here's what you got to do. You got to pay attention. You know, it's, it's going to be like this kind of a roller coaster down this river. We said, okay, it sounds like fun. So, so, but he's instructing us. He's saying, okay, keep your life jacket. You're going to pedal at the same time. When I give you this instruction, you know, everybody's going to lean to the left and you're going to lean to the right. And then, you know, now, should somebody fall out, <laughs> you know, here's what you do. We have our life jackets on you. Don't pull them up. You won't be able to do it. You have to grab them, and then you have to, like, dunk them in the water. You actually have to submerse them, okay? And then to save them, you have to pull them out of the water and pull all the way back. So I'm going to show you a picture. 
So this is the picture here. And can you find Waldo? Can't find Alfredo? <laughs> yeah. It's the hair, right? Okay. <laughs> yep, I'm on the left. No, I'm over here. <laughs> So we're going down, this is actually a picture from that trip, right? So this girl with the purple hat on right here, kind of the left, third one down, um, good friend of mine. So we were going down this particular section of the rapids, and all of a sudden, we hit this bump, and she, it like in slow motion, it was kind of weird. She like fell back, and she fell into the water. Well, everybody's sitting there, and the instructor's on the top, He's looking at her, <laughs> and she's like bobbing, you know. <laughs> she's, you know, choking. <laughs> and, uh, but we kind of stood there. It seemed like a long time, but it must have just been like a second or two, really. But that, you know, when things like that happen, you know it happens in slow motion? It's kind of weird. So everybody's kind of looking at her, but I'm pretty literal. When somebody tells me, instructs me, I, I, I pay attention. So I, I jumped over from my side, I, I grabbed her, uh, like by the cuff, I kind of grabbed her, and then she was looking at me like, what are you doing? And, and I said, I don't know what I said, I said something like, sorry, and I dunked her in the water, you know, because the, the, you guys know the point, right? Because of the life jacket, it creates like the bobber effect, right? So, so I dunked her, and I just pulled all the way back, and, you know, we landed back inside the boat, and at first we're looking at each other, and we, kind of, I don't know, maybe we cried a little bit, but then we started laughing. It was so funny. And I was thinking, okay, first of all, I take no credit for that. Nothing. I mean, the only reason why I took action is because I was instructed on what to do. I listened to something. I, I heard somebody tell me, here's what you do. And should this ever happen, take action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this book. And this book is the book of James. I'm going to have to paraphrase a few things, but I want to focus on some, some key, key instruction here. Because the book of James is action-oriented. It is like a, a action hero movie right there in the middle of the Bible. And the, the person that wrote it is God, but through James. Now James was believed to be the brother of Jesus, you know, that James, who became the leader of the church in Jerusalem. But none of that happened until after Jesus' resurrection, his birth, life, and then death. So somehow seeing his brother that was crucified come back to life was life-changing <laughs> and so he becomes the leader of the church in Jerusalem so what we're looking at now is the purpose of the book of James is God telling us to be people of faith and action to do something to listen to the instruction so the book of James is talking to us and it's saying that through the peaceful times we have the faith but when times happen of trials and it says specifically the trials and the troubles and the tribulation times we still need to be people of action because we need to have our faith working for us. You guys with me so far? It's challenging Christians to not neglect the duties of us as believers because sometimes we hear things but we don't always do them. We are called to live a life according to God's purpose and plan and not just listen. James 1 25 says this. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, but you walk away and forget what you look like. But you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free. And if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. James 2, 14, 18 says, and this is the part I, I really want to focus on here. But what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you have faith, but you don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister has no food or clothing, you say goodbye and have a good day, and you say, stay warm, eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds, but I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have any good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. 
we can't just hear the word we have to be doers God is saying to each one of us in the book of James that we need to get up off our chairs and we need to start <laughs> we need to start living the life that Christ has for us to develop this relationship with Jesus on a daily basis we need to start gaining ground and stop losing it Amen. and part of the reason why I'm, I'm being so expressive is the sense that you know I talk to people and I listen and I and I and I I bluntly I'm talking to some people about the same thing and the same issues they were dealing with three four five six seven nine ten twelve years ago and it's not that they not hearing the word because even myself I'm the perfect example of somebody who walked around for years talking the talk and not walking the walk until God started downloading how to put my faith into action we need to start overcoming our past challenges we need to start participating in the life that God has called us to live in we need to start being different than the world we got to start taking action not just for ourselves but for our loved ones and our family and our friends and our neighbors and the strangers and here's a big highlight we are not called to sit on our salvation <laughs> we need to know and admit we need Jesus we can't go through life without a relationship with God because when we realize how much he loves us when you feel the spirit and you and you got that feeling that God's drawing you near to him think about this if God just wanted us to be saved and not then have a life for us to live if if God just wanted us to accept his son Christ as Savior and then say well glad that's over my works are done if, if God didn't have a plan for every single one of you if God didn't want us to do good works and put our faith into action and to try to walk out the life that he has for us if God didn't have a plan and a purpose for everybody then the New Testament would probably be about a page and a verse it would say what's the next slide John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and then it might say believe it accept it see in heaven the end <laughs> we cannot rest in our salvation right. see because that saying is true if you've ever heard of it you know the acronym for Bible B-I-B-L-E basic instructions before leaving earth right John 3 17 says now that you know these things you will be blessed if you do them see here's another highlight for you see if you take notes this is a good note taker here I don't know if I put this up here just acknowledging God is not an active relationship that is not a life of action yeah I know God I know Jesus that's good enough for me okay I, I, I know he's Lord and Savior that's good I'm fine okay no 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 God has called us to be people of action to live a life and a calling and a purpose for every single one of us I mean trust me I walked like 25 years ignoring what God had called me to do we are called to live a purpose and a life and to be people of action and not sit on our salvation we have to believe that we're supposed to be here that God has placed it together for a purpose that we are called to be people of action and too many times bluntly us Christians we sit on the sidelines if we believe that then we are called to take action in the church in the fellowship with our friends and our believers and our family we are to take action in our homes with our loved ones our friends we're to take action in our jobs at our workplaces walking into a restaurant or something or someplace we are called to have this relationship with Jesus Christ because he loves us so much that he's called you to have a purpose and a plan this isn't just sitting on the sidelines until you know and no no offense to anybody but we can't always just come Jesus come soon life's tough I mean come home Jesus take us home I'm ready sitting on the sidelines doing nothing just waiting for God to call us home 
There is so much that God has us, that wants us to do, that He has us, that He has planned for us. And we've got to stop missing out on it. One of our foundational verses, I'll throw this slide up here for you, is Matthew 7, 24. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built the house on a rock. And think about it. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man. And you go back to what James is saying in 122, saying that if you're hearers and not doers and we don't do what God wants to do, otherwise we're only fooling ourselves. Not wise. We gotta be people of action. I mean, when God called us to Rock of Life, I want this to be an active church. I want this to be a community. If you read our website, it says, you know, it'd be a community. Not all, not all uh, ministries are, are the same. You know, some have different communities, different cultures, different styles and approaches. And Rock of Life is called to have a certain style, a certain approach. I believe in Jesus first, the cornerstone, the foundation. There's other things God has for us that he has planned for us, but you have to know Jesus first. You've got to focus on Christ. You have to focus on Jesus. So I want to be people of action. I, the leaders and the pastors of this church, we, we challenge ourselves. I mean, they call me out when I need to be called out. They, they tell me when, when I, I need to refocus or something because I want accountability. I want to be a pastor of action. I never want to be the pastor who just gets up here, says a good word, and goes home in a BMW or something like that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I drive a nice Dodge. That's good enough. <laughs> so here's your challenge. If that's what you want, I want to start right now. I want you to be people of action with us, okay? Are you guys ready for that? So we're going to run through a few things today to help us be people of action. Are you guys good? Yeah. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. So, here's the first big thing I want to focus on right now. If someone is here who hasn't started their relationship with Jesus, and you've been gathering information and checking people out and seeing what it's about, if, if, if you feel this pull, this, this leading from God to be part of His family, to have a relationship with Christ, to be led by the, spirit, by the Spirit. That is our first action today. Okay? So we're going to pray right now. Because the time is now. Stop putting it off. It, it's, it's, it's time. If you don't have the relationship with Christ, we're going to do that right now for anyone. And I'm not going to put you in a spot. We don't have a spotlight. Uh, okay? <laughs> not going to do that. You know, here's what I want you to do. A relationship with Jesus is between you and Christ. It's you and Him. It's, it's being filled with the Spirit and recognizing a purpose. It's about radical change. And it's also about remaining, remaining in Christ, having God amplify these good things in your life and starting to delete the things that don't please Him. So if you don't have that relationship with Christ, before I finish this message, before I keep, keep going, that's where we need to start, okay? So I'm going to have everybody bow their heads right now. Nobody looking around, your eyes are closed. This is the time right now to focus on Jesus. And if you have that relationship with Christ, it's a great time to rededicate yourself. It is a great time to say, Christ, I'm ready to rededicate and be even more of a person of action. So eyes closed, please. Nobody looking around. And you can, you can repeat this with me openly or silently, whatever you like. First of all, Father God, it is time, Lord. I desire to have this relationship with you. A deep relationship. I now know I need Jesus. I need to have this relationship. Forgive me of the things I've done against you. My sins. I acknowledge I need you. I invite your spirit into my heart so I can be saved and spend eternity with you forever. No, no matter where I am in this relationship, God, Help, this today, help today be a new beginning. A new action-oriented life with you, Jesus. Led by your Spirit. Fellowshipping with God. Thank you for saving me, God. I need you, Jesus. And everyone said, Amen.
Now, real quick. If you're bold enough, and I'm going to challenge you, if you said that prayer and you just met Jesus and you're ready, or you just rededicated your life, raise your hand. I'm going to have the ushers, David, where's David? David's right there. Raise your hand real quick for me. Don't, don't be shy if you can. Just raise your hand if you said that. If by some chance you don't want to raise your hand or you're a little shy, what I want to do is don't leave here without coming up to me afterwards because I want to pray with you. I want, to, I want to connect you and lead you and guide you in something. Okay? Here's the next thing we're going to do. I want to make sure that you know that every Sunday that we have messages for you. That I truly believe that the messages are for everyone at some point in your life, whether you've only met Christ recently or you've had a relationship with Jesus for a long time. I want to make sure that you know that God really wants you to dig deep into these messages to take the notes home and to be able to not just use them on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday. See, we're supposed to be challenged to learn and grow. And I make about, not those papers, the, the, the memos. So every Sunday, we have about 100 plus so people here every Sunday. And I make about 30, 35 copies of my notes. And every Sunday, about 20 or so are left. So I'm going to have the ushers today. I'm going to get you kick-started. Every Sunday, I'm going to challenge you to go pick up the notes from today's message. So I'm going to hand them to you right now. So if you guys start handing these out to every single person here, or even couples, I've made about 125 copies. So just pass them out, take one down, pass it down if you guys would like. But take the notes, use them as Bible study, use them in the morning. Start to pray with them over your, with your family. Um, use them as a devotional, a Bible study through the week, something to refer to. Even if you just prayed about it on Monday morning to kickstart your week, it'll take you five minutes to go through this. Talk to God, commune with the Lord for a while. But get used to taking the notes that are back on the table every Sunday. So we're going to pass these out to you right now. Now I'll give you a second. So what I do with the notes is I take all the key highlights and I take the notes that are like the Bible verses and the key points and I put them into one page for you because my attention is about a page. So I want to make sure you guys understand to take these notes and what the purpose of them is. All right. So while those are being handed out, you can fold them and keep them with you, put them in your Bible, in your pocket, whatever you need. So the next thing is, we have events. We have activities because we don't want to be just a Sunday ministry. We know that we want to connect people with Christ every day, seven days a week. So we have events and we have opportunities for people to get together and grow. All right. So like uh, yesterday, we had the men's breakfast. I had about 11 men show up. I had a handful of guys at the, at the men's meeting on Thursday night. And last week, I called people to Panera, said, hey, we're going to go down there and hang out at Panera for a while. We had 31 people show up. That was awesome. But I want to show you something. Let's go to the next slide. If you have your phones and you're really good with your phones or your iPads, you need to bookmark this. Bookmark rockoflifechico.org. This is our website. If you've never visited, you need to visit. Read through it. Because on that website, go to the next page, is our calendar. This is the home page. Now, in the upper left-hand corner, no, go back one more. That's okay. So in the upper left-hand corner, you can connect to Yelp. Click on the Yelp icon. You can click on Facebook. It'll take you to our Facebook page where you can see all of our services live every Sunday, our messages that are posted daily. You can even see the Sunday messages that David Taylor, he takes the message, the, the video, he, he edits it and puts it on our, on our website and it's connected to our Facebook site. And then there is even Instagram and YouTube. There's a YouTube channel. We have this. Every single message that's ever been given here, uh, except for testimonies, is posted on this YouTube channel. So why am I telling you this? It's because this is activity. This is action. We want to be your home. We want to be your community. We want you to rely on people. You want this to be that place that you can come and you feel safe. That you can be who you are and see how Christ and God starts to work on you. How the Holy Spirit starts to lead you. And this is our duty. Our duty is to, as me as a pastor, as a shepherd, is to lead as God leads. I'm just a messenger. This is all about Jesus. 
So I want to show you something. So on the next page is our calendar of events. If you click on calendar events, this is our calendar. It's posted and we updated pretty much every week. It'll tell you when the brothers meet. We just met on the 15th, yesterday at 9 a.m. Young to Heart meets today at 12. We have Soda Serve on Thursdays, men's group. You got uh, the women's Bible studies on Tuesday, Mondays. There's something going on almost every day. And we have our special events like the ice cream social is somewhere in there. Okay. Friday? Friday 28th. Fellowship Friday. Thank you. So obviously I need to pay more attention to it. So this, this is important. This is action because who knows you may meet a new person. There was a new person at the at the men's Bible, uh, the men's breakfast yesterday, somebody I really hadn't spent time with, a couple of them, Stoney and somebody else, right? I really like meeting new people. It, it was awesome, but it's, I feel like I met a new friend. And maybe during the calendar week, maybe you invite somebody. Maybe after Sunday you don't go home. Maybe you invite somebody to have some tea. Go talk. Maybe you make a friend for life. We need to have activity. God calls us to fellowship, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. He calls us to fellowship. Okay, here's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to pray about a few things. I'm going to break this down into three sections. Chip, can you turn me down slightly? So, the first thing that I really believe we need to pray about today is our relationships. Our spouses, our kids, our parents, our boyfriends, girlfriends, extended family, and Uncle Bob, Cousin Zimmy, whatever, who, whatever. We need to start praying for people, somebody at work. And we need to start taking action on those prayers and what we do with these people. It's like as if, it's like as if, I've, I've been, prayer. It as, it's as if I need to make sure that my mic is on, thank you. I got to make sure that I'm taking action even with my wife as far as I used to ignore her. I, I would, there's no date nights. There was no going to the movies. I, it was like we were roommates at one point early on in our relationship. And when God started saying, grow your relationship with me and then your relationship with the other people will start growing. So, you know, go out with your wives. Take her to a date night. Uh, uh, wives, let your husbands vent before you give them this great wisdom. It's awesome. <laughs> But men need to vent. At, you know, I was talking to Ron about, you know, praying with our kids more. How many take your kids on a walk in the park and, or take them outside and pray with them? Not just dinner and, and bedtime, but go outside, take your Bible, sit outside when it's not so hot and pray. <laughs> Tell them about Jesus. Invite a friend to lunch, a, a tea, something. Send your wife flowers unexpectedly. Call somebody that you were mad at 15 years ago and tell them you're sorry. Um, do something. T uh, call your mom, your dad, and tell them you love them. We've had people who just lost their parents recently. You have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. Be people of action. Walk in love and do something intently. I'm sure you guys are thinking about people you can call right now. Man, I should call him. I actually did that when I was really radically rededicated. I actually called maybe 15 people and just said I was sorry. So let's pray right now. We're going to pray for our spouses, our kids, our wives, moms, dads, cousins, nephews, strangers next door. We're going to pray for them right now. So if you can, bow your heads right now. Hey, Father God, I just want to say I thank you so much for the relationships you've put in my life. Number one, Jesus. But God, there's people in my life right now that I've had struggles with in the past and I may have struggles with them right now. I want to let that go. I want to let that go. I want to walk in love and mercy and grace and forgiveness, Lord. And I just want to release it right now. If there's anything I've been holding against anybody, I just want to release that. I want to walk in love, God. Show me the action I need to take to show the love to Jesus, to a family member or a friend. Help me to love like you love me. Lord, I ask you to put somebody on my heart right now that I need to improve our relationship. There's somebody, Lord, that's on my heart right now I need to contact. I 
need to show the love of Jesus to you, Lord. It's not about fault or guilt or blame. It's about moving forward, Lord. It's about restoration. It's about repair. So, Lord, imprint that name on our heart so we don't forget. We'll take action, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Number two. I alluded to this earlier. This fellowship is called to be your support, your family. I know in a couple months we'll hit three years, but we want to grow for the right reasons. I want to be the kind of pastor that's not the guy you see on a Sunday and you only see on a Sunday. I, I want to have the same accessibility now and five years from now. I truly mean this when I say this, that our team wants to serve. We want to be servants. I, I meet with a, a bunch of guys during the week. We have a group on occasion. I, I'll meet with people as much as I can. And I am sincere when I say, if you need something, you call. We will talk with you over the phone. I'll meet you. I'll text you. I'll put you in touch with the woman's pastor, the leaders. Uh, there are Bible studies you can connect with. There are women's Bible studies, men's Bible studies. There's youth groups. There's there's groups we have that meet just randomly. We have events just to fellowship. I meet, I'll meet as many people as humanly possible. And I'm serious. Call me. There's my number. Call me. 530-588-4700. If by some chance I don't answer right now, I will call you back. And I'll pray with you. Uh, I'll just listen if that's what you want. I'll, just, I'll connect you with Pastor Rick. Pastor Debbie, the youth directors, I'll, the elders. We are here. For, you will never, ever bother me. You call, and if I don't call you at that moment, I'm busy, and I will call you back. We'll connect you somehow. Amen? Amen. Third prayer. We are called to be doers, not just hearers. So we're going to pray again. We're going to pray one more time, and I have an action for you. There is something you need to do in your life, and I don't know what it is, but it's heavy on my heart this whole week. Every single person has something going on right now. Maybe one or two things, but I know for a fact that there's something coming to people's minds and say, I need to start this. I got to start this. I, God's been calling me to do this. I got to step out in faith. I, I know people have changed jobs recently and stepped out in faith to do things that they finally want to do. And there are people that have reached out to family members, but I feel this heaviness right now. There's something that you are called to take upon yourself and take the action that God's been wanting you to take. And I want to pray about that. I want to give you a Bible verse, Philippians 4, 9. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. We are called to not just think about things when we hear them. We are called to do them. Amen, brother in the corner? So I'm telling you, there is something God's calling you to do. I sat for years. I don't want to sit anymore. I knew what to do and I didn't do it. This fellowship has a mission. It's a vision that God's given us and I know where He wants to take us. And it's going to be an active church. A loving church. A challenging church. Not tickle your ears, make you feel good, go home, have lunch with your kids, go to bed, wake up the next day, hit the ground running at work. Not what I'm talking about. An active, daily, refreshing, victorious, challenging, victory through the tough times life with Jesus. Amen. And it's got to start with ourselves. So here's how I'm going to end this message right now. David, you got those piece of papers. I need everybody to take this piece of paper with them. There's red and green ones. That's all I had. It was from Christmas. So <laughs> it's just a blank strip of paper. And I'll tell you what to do with it, but I want to make sure everybody gets one. I know that there's something God wants you guys to do. So take the piece of paper, hang on to it. Don't write anything on it. Just hang on to it. It's going to be a reminder for something that we're going to do later. Think 
about what God's calling you to do. It could be, call that person. It could be flexing your faith and start developing a relationship with Jesus. It could be calling somebody that you need to ask for forgiveness for. Or it could be uh, uh, praying more with your children. It, create a date night with your spouse. It could be wake up in the morning and do a devotional. It could be pick up the instrument you've laid down for years and you finally want to learn how to play it again. It could be, you know, being more active in church, serving in the church someplace. It could be going to work and working for the Lord and not for men. It could be loving somebody. It could st stop watching that TV show. Stop watching that stuff on the computer. It could be something small, large, in between. We need to take action because the key part of it and the main reason why is to grow our relationship with Jesus to find the purpose and the plan that God has for us. Amen? So here's what I want to do. In two months, in two months, we have another Testimony Sunday. It'll be in September. I want to have a time where during the testimony that whatever action that you did, that you have a praise report about, that you did this and this is what God has blessed me with, this is my, how my relationship with Jesus grew. I'm going to give kind of an open mic. I'll give you about 30 seconds. All you got to do is I want to line the people up, and I want all of you to be able to do this, even if you're shy about talking in front of people. Just walk up and go, I forgave somebody, and you walk off. Or you can walk up and go, I did something. I can't tell you, but <laughs> God came through, and we'll cheer and clap and praise, and, and that's what we're going to do, right? So I want a line of people, and I'll tell you the, 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 the weekend, but it'll be Testimony Sunday. I may have one or two testimonies, but we have, if we have half an hour of people just going through line, walking up and saying 30 seconds of, every Friday night, we have date night now. Me and my wife go out and see a movie or have dinner. Great. Great testimony. So the next person, two months, hang on to that piece of paper, go home today, you can either write something on it and put it in your Bible, which would be my suggestion, or if it's something that you're not afraid to see your family members look at or something, tape it up on your mirror in your bathroom, devotional every day. Smile every day. Call my friend, have out, hang out with tea, do tea once in a while. Stop this, start that, continue this. Whatever you want to do. And in two months of September, we're going to have a Testimony Sunday, and I want you guys lined up to walk up here and say what God is accomplishing in your life. Amen? Amen. 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 One last thing. Mr. David De La Rosa, can you do me a favor? Can you bring that prayer bowl up here? And then I'll chip for somebody. Can you grab the praise bowl? The, yeah, forget Hang on there, buddy. We really pray for you. Whatever you drop in here, we pray over. And I'll tell you another thing. Even if you don't drop something in here, piece of paper, I need a job, I need, I need house, I need a, a repair of finances, somebody's ill, somebody's sick, I'm still praying for you. Every single person here I pray for. And when something awesome happens, we're here to celebrate with you. All these praise reports. So whether you drop something in here or not for us to pray with you, openly. See, God knows what you need before you even ask. So when we sit up here in our prayer people and we have our intercessory prayers and we're praying for you, we're saying, God, what's ever going on in everyone's life, thank you for all these victories. And whatever the challenge are, thank you, Lord, that you're showing them the path and the direction. Thank you for bringing them closer to Jesus. This must, the challenge, this must be an active church. Active. And I'm not talking the building. Don't get me wrong. The church is who? You. It's not just Sunday morning. It's what are you doing Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. 24-7 active relationship with Jesus. So like in the book of James says, when these trials come, the tribulations come, there's action that you know I need to take. Somebody falls out of a, a, a raft, I knew the action to take because I taught. I was heard. I heard. When my life was falling apart, I read the word and God told me what to do if I wanted to be blessed and it started with Jesus. Amen? We're going to pray over these again. This time don't close your eyes. It's okay. It's, it's possible to, to pray without closing your eyes. So, 
Father God, I, I sincerely, Lord, thank you for the request from these people that they make them known to you. Whatever their challenges, Lord, are, whatever their victories are, we give you the glory. We thank you for every person's here in need, whatever their challenges are, Lord. I just ask, Lord, that we seek you first, as your word says, Matthew 6, that we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to us, Lord. Lord, I pray that people here seek your, your face. They seek this relationship with Christ. That they don't seek the things of God before they seek God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for an active relationship with Jesus that we claim victory over these prayer requests. And we thank you for the victory for these praise reports. Thank you for blessing each person here. In the name of Jesus, and we all prayed and said, Amen. Amen. Are you good with this? Yeah. Challenge. I'll close. Two months, we have an appointment. Probably that second, third week, right after communion, when everybody gets back from school and stuff like that. I'll be making announcements periodically about this. If you don't feel led right now, you might a couple months from now. But we need to be people of action. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you one more time, Lord, for victory.